God's thinking, part two. God's thinking, part two. I started this with you last week. I'm going to talk to you briefly about it and continue. Uh, my wife has taken most of my preaching time, but that's okay. You saw me going to whisper. What I said is that, so that we can't do this all day. <laughs> Maybe we should, though. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because I know that once she gets going, she's just not going to stop. But that's good. She's excited about God, and I'm excited about that. But, man, I want to preach, man. <laughs> Amen. God's thinking. God, God's thinking part two. Let others live a small lives, but not you. Let others lead a small life, but not you. Let others argue over small things, but not you. Let others get angry, get offended over small odds, but not you. Let others leave their future in the hand of someone else, but not you. I want to turn to your neighbor and say this after me. Let others live a small life, but not you. Let others cry over little offenses, but not you. Let others argue over small things, but not you. Let others put their future in the hand of someone else, but not you. Do you know that the life that you now live, the life that you now have, is God's gift to you? The way you choose to live your life is your gift back to God. Your life it's in your hand. It's not in the hand of anybody. It's not in the hand of the government. It's not in the hand of the politician. It's not in the hand of anybody. Your life is in, the, is in your own hand. So you can choose to live an abundant life. You can choose to live in full. You can choose to live nothing missing, nothing broken. You can choose to live a life of fulfillment. You can choose that. Especially in this great nation that we all live in. Your choices to succeed and to excel and to prosper is in your hand. Don't give excuses. God has called you to excel God has never created a failure. When God finished creating you, the Bible said God looked at you and said, you are good. Tell somebody, I'm good, man. Come on, let's try it again. Tell somebody, I'm good. Tell somebody, I am good. Tell somebody, you are good too. When God finished creating you, he said you are good. I don't care who tells you you are not good. God said you are good. And if God says something, I would rather go with what God says than what man says. Because he created you just like himself. He created you in his image, in his likeness. He created you to be unique, to be special. He created you in the same way he is. Heaven is so sweet. How many of you know that heaven is sweet? I know you've not been there, but you've read about it. Heaven is so sweet, and God's plan is to duplicate it on earth through you. <laughs> heaven is so sweet, and God's plan is to duplicate it on earth through you. God wants you to live like he lives in heaven. 
You remember that our, our Lord's prayer? As it is in, so shall it be on earth. God dominates heaven. God reigns in heaven. God is in charge of everything in heaven. God was, is, and will be in command forever in heaven. And the same way, God wants you and I to be in command on earth. So he said, as it is in heaven, it shall be on earth. And the Bible says in Psalm 115, verse 16, we read that last week. I'm just uh, previewing what we did last week. In Psalm 115, verse 16, the Bible says the heaven is for the Lord. And the earth is made for the sons of man. So that's why God says, what I am doing in heaven, I would like you to do on earth. So I'm going to create you in my image, just the way I am. In my likeness, I'm going to create you. And I want you to do exactly what I'm doing in heaven on earth. Can I ask you a question? Is God oppressed in heaven? Come help me here now, man. Is God oppressed in heaven? Is God struggling in heaven? Is God sick in heaven? Is God under any kind of pressure in heaven? Is God confused in heaven? Is God scared in heaven? He said the sweetness of heaven, sons of man, sons of God, go and duplicate it on earth. So the Bible says he created heaven for himself and he created earth for us and he says, I am, as I am, so you are. I'm creating you in my own image. I'm creating you in my own likeness. I'm giving you the same authority I have. I'm giving you the same power, the same idea, the same desire, the same interest. Just as I am in heaven, I'm releasing that to you so you go to earth. You know that what God created God like himself And he put those gods on earth and he called them men and women. I was just thinking about that this morning. Your image is you. We talked about this briefly last week. Your son's image are your son. If I show you the picture of my daughter, I say, this is my daughter. You know that's my daughter. That's my daughter. That's an image of my daughter. He asked, she, that, that, that paper, the photo has to look like my daughter. If I show you my own picture, Emmanuel was here yesterday. Our base player came back, got married four weeks ago, right? He thought he was going to be here this morning. I think he didn't come because I said I'm going to call him out. No, I'm just kidding. And, and, and he brought us this beautiful picture, album that he took in Dominican Republic where he got married. And they were so beautiful. And, I mean, the picture makes Aunt Emmanuel look more, more good looking than he really is. So, but it was, you know, you know, hey, <laughs> man. Hey, man. Oh, praise Jesus. And I looked at him and I said, man, Emmanuel, you are not this cute. <laughs> You know? <laughs> and it was Emmanuel's picture, and Emmanuel was standing right next to me. So Emmanuel is saying, Pastor, take my picture. And when he said, take my picture, I, Emmanuel, Emmanuel don't have to point me who Emmanuel was because I know who Emmanuel was. Because in that picture, I can see who he was. If Emmanuel has point, uh, pointed out somebody else to me and said, that is me, I would have said, Emmanuel, no, that's not you. This is you. Because Emmanuel's image and likeness look like Emmanuel. Yeah, he looks better. He was dressed, well-shaped, you know, all kind of stuff, looking good. But it was Emmanuel. When God shows you his picture... Is showing you himself. When God says, I'm creating man in my own image, I'm creating man in my own picture, he's creating man to look exactly like him. So, biblically, biblically, you are a God. 
on earth. You are not a God in heaven. God is already in heaven. But you are the little image of God that he put on earth. And it's important for you to understand it because the Bible says, good understanding brings favor. Because when you know who you are, you can no longer be oppressed. I mean, how many of you have heard the story of the lion sheep? The story was told of a, 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 a sheep, a, a mother sheep that found a little lion, a cub. And this sheep took this lion and raised this lion up. And this lion sheep, all he knew was sheep. And he started bleating like sheep. Man. Even though it was a lion. He started eating grass like sheep, even though it was a lion. When a hyena shows up, or a tiger shows up, he runs like the sheep, even though it was a lion. And when they go to graze in the grass and drink water in the stream, when the lion shows up on the other side, all the sheep runs, and he runs with them, even though it was a lion. And one day, they were grazing at the sheep and the, at the grass, and they were eating, and, and they, they went to the stream drinking. And when they started drinking, he looked at his reflection from the water. And for the first time, wait a minute. I look like that thing we run away from. I don't look like my brothers and my sisters. I look like that thing we run away from. So he began to think. So the next time they went to the stream to drink water, and the lion shows up on the other side of the stream, and all his lion sheep, all, all his sheep sister and sheep brother ran, he stood. He looked at them, looked at his own reflection of the water, and said, I look like him. Why should I run from him? Instead of running away with his sheep, brothers and sisters, he walked towards this lion. They embraced each, each other. Welcome him into the kingdom of lion. And he's no longer scared. He went from bleating nah, to rah, roaring. There are many of us that have been bleating for too long. God wants to put your bleating in the back burner and move it to the roaring stage. Many of us are running from things that should be running from us. Do you know that man was never afraid until man fell? Adam never knew what fear was until Adam committed sin and God came to him and said, Adam, Adam, where are thou? And he said, I heard your voice and I was afraid. And God said, how can you be afraid? He said, I heard your voice and I was afraid and because I was naked. And God said, how can you be naked? Have you eaten? After the food I ask you not to eat. There are many sheep, lion in the body of Christ. They are lion. But they are too scared because they have never seen their own reflection through the mirror of the word of God. The purpose of this series is to begin to show you who you are. It's for you to get to that place. The Bible says the righteous, watch this. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as what? As lion. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as lion. God wants you to know who you are because he needs you to know who you are in order for you to fulfill his plan for you on earth. If you don't understand that you are the son of God, you are the daughter of God, you are the child of God on earth, you will suffer like everybody else. Satan will torment you in your dream. Satan will torment you at your job. Satan will torment you at Walmart and Target. Satan will harass you at the gas station because you don't know who you are. But the day you find out who you are, the day you find out that you are not just a sheep, but you are a lion, you are the one terrorizing other gold. And other animals, no other animal terrorize you. Because the Bible says that the lion turns away from no other animal. God is never afraid. So you can be afraid. God is never weak. 
so you can be weak. God never fail. So you should not fail. God is not broke. You should not be broke. God lent to nation. God is the almighty God. He owns everything. You should stop borrowing. God is never sick. You should not be sick. Because you are not just anybody. You are the child of the living God. Satan is so scared of you. Every time you show up, he pees in his paint. The only problem is that you didn't know that, so you pee in your pants too when he shows up. You know what I'm saying? The greatest fear of the devil is that you will find out who you are. The greatest fear of the devil is that you will find out that you are a child of God, you have authority that wherever you put your feet on is given unto you, that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you, that you are the head and not the tail, that you lend to a nation and you do not borrow. The greatest fear of the devil is that the Bible says, you, you, surely you are, you, you, Jesus borne your grief and carried your sorrow. By his strap you are healed. The greatest fear of the devil is that you will recognize the grace of God upon your life. You are not a victim. You are a victor. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Whatsoever you set your heart to do, you can do it. You are unstoppable. Tell somebody, I'm unstoppable. Come on, tell somebody, I'm unstoppable. Tell somebody, I am unstoppable. Tell somebody, I see the invisible. I can touch the untouchable. I can do the undoable. You are God's secret weapon on earth. You are God's WMD against the kingdom of darkness. You are God's weapon of mass destruction. You are God's Rambo. Rambo, you know Rambo, first blood. You are a mini god. You know that movie? Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know what I'm talking about? Twins. God is the big one. You are the short one. You know what I'm saying? God is the big one. You are the short one. God created you and I in his image. To fulfill destiny. You are not a victim. You are a victor. Don't let what the doctor tells you begin to control your entire life. I'm going to quickly go and show you scripture because of our time. And we, 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 we're going to this full next week. Let me show you a few things. Let me show you a few sightings of God in you. God showing you in different ways how you are a God in him. You are his image. So you carry what he carries. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I refuse to live a small life. I refuse to be nobody. I am somebody. I am somebody. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I can do all things. I am strong. I am powerful. God lives big in me. The devil cannot touch me. I am God's weapon on planet Earth. Thank you, Jesus, for living inside of me. The sightings of God. The sightings of God. Exodus chapter 7, verse 1 to 2. Exodus chapter 7, verse 1 to 2. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee what? Is it on the screen? Okay, let's try that again. Exodus chapter 7, verse 1 to 2. Can we read it together? 1, 2, 3, go. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee what? 
God to Pharaoh. God said, you have to see. Listen, the whole purpose of this preaching is so that you can see it. Because once, once you see it, now you can run with it. It becomes your pursuit. Once it becomes your pursuit, it becomes your passion. Once it becomes your passion, it becomes your value. Once it becomes your value, it becomes your reward. The reason people are struggling because we don't see, we can't see it. We always wonder, well, things are really hard right now. Things are tough. Everybody knows it's tough. So we can't do it. Oh, we are struggling right now. The, the economy is bad. Do you know that you are not supposed to live on the world's economy? Do you, know that, do you know that God never experienced depression or oppression or repression or suppression in heaven? Do you know that God always had plenty and more than enough? Do you know that during the time of depression, there were people making billions of dollars? Do you know that during the last economic crisis, there are people that make billions during that time? Do you know it's not everybody that declared bankruptcy during the last economic crisis? Do you know that? Do you know that there are many people that are declaring bankruptcy during economic boom? During the time when there is money everywhere, there is job everywhere, when the unemployment rate was down to 4%, do you know there are people that are still broke? So it's, it doesn't matter what is happening around you. It is what is happening to you. And perhaps as a man thinking, so is he. So if you know who you are, if you begin to see what God has called you to be, you will suddenly realize that what is happening around you does not dictate what happens in you. What happens in you is what dictates what happens around you. The Bible says, I have made you salt. How many of you know that salt changes its environment? How many of you have ever eat, eaten a food that has no salt? Don't you know immediately that there's no salt? I mean, you ask for salt and you introduce salt. Salt takes over. In fact, if you put too much salt, you are in trouble. How many of you have been served a food that was oversalted? How many of you know that you can't eat it? It doesn't matter how nice you are to the person that cook it. Say, can I have this as to go, please? <laughs> to go into the trash can, please. <laughs> you, just, you just eat the trash can part of it. Say, hey, can I have this to go, please, into the trash can? I remember many years ago when I was living in South Florida, I had a lady that loved me so much, loved me so much. My wife, remember, my wife met her once. Because when we got married, she was the one that stood as my mom. Actually, her name was my mother's name, Comfort. And this lady is the, one of the nicest ladies you ever meet in your life. She's so sweet, but she's too sweet. She was too sweet. I mean, this lady will cook big pot of stew, big pot of rice, and big, I mean, just cook, 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 cook for me. One person, she'll bring it on Monday, and then by Thursday, she's cooking another one. Even if I'm a sumo fighter, I can't eat all that, man. I mean, she will cook and cook, she just cooks, she just, all kind of stuff. There's only one problem with miscomfort food. It's always too salty. <laughs> And when she cooked, I mean, the food smells good, looks good, but don't taste good. I hope she's not listening to this sermon. Mama, don't listen to this sermon, please. And she will bring the food, and I'm like, I mean, every time she brings the food, I feel very bad. Because I know what is going to happen to that food. I mean, the food, she will spend money. I mean, she will buy meat, she will buy oxtail, everything, just big pot, and bring it. She called me, my pastor, I want to make sure you're okay. I just came to the U.S. She will bring me food. And I always pray, Father, make sure, please, let's make sure there's no salt in this food because it looks so good. And almost every time, I will have to take that food and throw it out. Because when salt shows up, Salt shut down everything else. 
Salt is never intimidated. Salt. Why are you so intimidated? Why are you always scared? Why do you go through this inferiority complex? I'm not good enough. I'm not cute enough. I'm not tall enough. I'm not short enough. I'm not black enough. I'm not white enough. The white are turning. The black are bleaching. You are never satisfied. Always, I'm not enough. I'm not enough. I'm not enough. I'm, I'm too short. I'm too fat. I'm too skinny. I mean, come on. You are created in the image of God. God said to Moses, and the Lord said unto Moses, See! God wants you to see it. See! 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 Your eyes have been closed for too long. See! You've shut your eyes off for too long. See! See that you are a child of God. See that you are a God in the flesh. See that you are created in the image of the Most High. See that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. See that wherever the soul of your feet touches has been given unto you. See. God has to make Moses see. Because Moses did not recognize who he was. He was scared. I can't go to Pharaoh. I'm scared of Pharaoh. Uh, Pharaoh is the king of Egypt. Pharaoh has chariot. Pharaoh has power. Pharaoh has soldiers. Pharaoh has swords and guns. Pharaoh, 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 I'm scared. Some of you, your Pharaoh is cancer. Your Pharaoh is poverty. Your Pharaoh is depression. I'm scared. Your Pharaoh is migraine and, and struggle. Your Pharaoh is dead. I'm, I'm Pharaoh, I'm scared. God says, see. I'm going to die young. I'm going to die single. I'm going to die poor. God says, see, no. Pharaoh is nobody if you know who you are. See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. What is your Pharaoh today? Who is your Pharaoh? I've made you a God to Pharaoh. Because you have to understand, see, that you are a God inside in order to subdue Pharaoh outside. So I am blessed. I say I am blessed. I am not cursed. I am blessed. I am not poor. I am rich. I am not weak. I am strong. Because they let the weak say I am strong. The reason why you will say you are weak is because you don't know who you are. Because your feeling should not dictate your utterances. Your utterances should control your feeling. You are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. Go and do the business. Go and pass the exam. Go and excel at your job. Go and win the case. Go and build the house. Go and start the business. Go and win. You are a child of the Most High God. Rise up on your faith.